Hello everyone, I am making this video to illustrate a little bit uh, the different tools and functions that we have uh, inside uh, Wallis. Wallis stands for the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shorelines. Before I get into it, I just want to uh, give you some information about the project that uh, funded the creation of Wallis. And the project is called Warm Coasts, a Sea Level and a Stream Waves in the Last Interglacial. This project is funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program through a European Research Council starting grant. If you are interested uh, on this project, you can navigate to www.warmcoasts.eu and you can find a lot about us, what we do, what are the research gaps we are attempting uh, to fill in the next few years and the participating institutions. So, from this website, you can go in the menu and you can go into the World Atlas. This is the portal that will lead you into um, Wallis. And to enter Wallis, uh, you have to access this button and you will be redirected to a GitHub pages. Now, if you want, you can click here on the left and the project, this entire project that I'm going to show you in the next uh, few minutes is on GitHub. So this means that you can download everything and you can fork, uh, modify and do whatever you like with it. Um, and then if we think uh, that uh, the fork you did or the modifications you did are useful for everybody, we will uh, include them into the next releases of Wallis. So here there is a bit of uh, explanation of what is Wallis, how does it work. I'm not going to go in the details uh, into it, but just suffice to say that Wallis is a sea level database. So it's a database containing sea level data from uh, the last interglacial or Pleistocene times in general. Uh, Wallis is composed by different parts and different tools that actually make uh, a set of applications that can be used to either insert the data in Wallis or to um, visualize and download data from Wallis. So the first thing I want to show you today is uh, the interface that we are that we programmed to allow people to get into the database and insert their own data and it's accessible from here. If you look at the contribute to Wallis uh, um, interface, you click in here and you have the access interface. If you're a registered user, uh, your password will be remembered. If you're a new user, you can go here and you see that you have to give your username, password. We're going to ask you your name and email address to make sure um, that we know how to contact you and your country. And of course, uh, we have a set of terms and conditions you can download and uh, read but basically this says that we are not going to use your data outside of the scope of Wallis, which is to make some science on last interglacial sea levels. So here it is. I'm going to put my fingerprint here. I'm going to put the CAPTCHA. This is useful uh, to control who enters into the database and I can access to my own page inside Wallis. Very good. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this map that you see here in a second. But first, I just want to show you uh, that here, up here on the left hand side, there are different uh, tabs or different menu items that you can collapse or expand according to what you want. Of course, there is the security where you can change your password or log off from the system. And then there is a bunch of other things. I'm going to go through all of these um, and explain you what is inside each one of them. First, I want to start by this one, insert and edit data. So the one you have here is the version 1.8.0 of uh, the database interface. This means that through these menus that you have down here, you can insert your own data inside the database. It is important to remember that if you are logged in and you insert data, the data will remain exclusively yours, so private until you decide to publish them, to make them public. So if we see that you will publish them, we will reach out to you and we will ask, do you want to include this data in the public repository of Wallis? If you don't want to make them public, they are protected from the password you selected at the beginning. So nobody will be able to get to them and access them and, uh, and steal them from you, basically. So just to show you a little bit how it works, uh, we have different masks to insert different kinds of data. Uh, I'm going to start from the Pleistocene relative sea level. There are three different uh, ways to insert Pleistocene relative sea levels. 
and uh, they are pretty much uh, they have pretty much different fields i'm just going to show you um, just as an example the stratigraphy field which is uh, basically sea level data from the strati stratigraphic point of view so if i click on this i will enter into uh, the data that I, that I already inserted for uh, some of the papers that were just published so here there is uh, for example one site located in algeria you see that basically uh, there are some required fields these are the fields that we need to have inside a sea level database to make sure that every record is consistent with each other there are some others which are not uh, um, mandatory for example a main reference is mandatory for the data additional references if you have them you can insert them if you do not have them it's okay not to insert them so this is, for example, the general information page where you can actually go through, um, go through the different uh, uh, characterizations uh, the, of a sea level index point. And I just want to make you notice that up here you have these little question marks. And if you navigate onto these little question marks, you will have a short description of what uh, is needed inside the field that you are compiling. Then, for example, for the Pleistocene sea level, we, have, uh, we request information on elevation. We request information on age constraints and we request information on the quality of uh, the data point that you just inserted. Uh, let's keep in mind that this is not a, um, we do not request you to evaluate the work that was done by the colleagues who worked uh, in the field for this data, but more we ask for a, an estimate of how good is the sea level record of, or how representative is the sea level record in this area. If I go back here, you will see that you have uh, the possibility to insert in the age attribution uh, different uh, samples. You have U series, luminescence, amino acid, electrospin resonance or other. If I click on one, you will see that a mask will appear, for example, to insert amino acid racemization ages. And from here, you can select one of the ages that is in the database. If there is no age, if your age is not in the database, as it is when you start compiling data, what we suggest is you go here to edit. Another window will open, which will allow you to add a new data point. Um, and this is uh, everything that is needed to describe a sample from uh, uh, that, that was dated with uh, amino acid racemization ages. So I can I can hit it here, exit, I'm back here. So once you have inserted your, your amino acid racemization dated sample, for example, then it will be available here and you will be able to select it. Now I'm gonna go back and not modify this record. Um, but the important thing, I'm gonna skip the Holocene for a second, but I, the important thing is though that uh, the concept within Wallis is that sea level data is always connected with some sort of age constraint. And to put the age constraints, you go from this mask uh, and you have dated samples. Now, you can also uh, arrive to the dated samples through this interface down here. So you click on dated samples and you have exactly the same choices. For example, you see this here. You can select which one, uh, uh, which kind of dated material you have here. Coral, mollusks, spelethems or oolites. The data insertion mask is going to be a little bit different according to what you put, uh, to what you select here. So, for example, if you select coral, we can go on and you will have uh, the possibility to insert a new coral age. Uh, it is very interesting. So, for example, here to notice that you have uh, a set of tabs that are requested here. So you have analysis, metadata, geographic, ecological, and in analytical details where you put basically um, all the details of the analytical measurements and uh, the U-thorium ratios on the reported ages. But according to what you select here, for example, if this U-series data was recalculated, then uh, a recalculated tab will appear here with some more um, requested fields. So if you're using alpha, something something will disappear. If you use mass spectrometer, something will uh, will appear. So it's very important that you go through uh, the um, the different uh, fields that are requested here, uh, and of course that you make the initial choice, which there is for every dated sample. Uh, within the system. So the system can actually guide you better through the compilation of what is really needed in terms of, uh, in terms of data. We have another couple of uh, uh, tabs down here. One is the metadata. Uh, the metadata 
allows you to insert uh, all those data. There are accessory. We have tables for sea level indicator types, geographic positioning, datums, elevation measurement um, techniques, and the marine isotopic stages list. So uh, these ones are, for example, let me take the elevation measurement. These are just lists of um, techniques in this case to measure the elevation that you are then requested to select when you are inside the sea level part of the database or the dated samples. Of course every dated sample and every sea level index point must have a uh, elevation and an elevation measurement associated and the elevation measurement is selected from here. You see that uh, we did uh, already quite a lot of uh, work to put a lot of different uh, survey uh, techniques in here, but uh, if the survey technique you used or uh, that, uh, that you are reviewing is not inserted in here, you can just put add new and you're going to be able to write here the type of technique, the description, the typical accuracy, and then uh, this will be tagged to your part of the database. An important thing to remember is that whatever you insert here will not be private. So it will be visible by everybody. And this is made by design so everybody can actually exploit the expertise or what other colleagues have inserted in the database to avoid duplication of, for example, um, it's the same technique basically maybe just uh, slightly described slightly, slightly differently in the database. The same thing is valid for the references. So uh, whenever you insert something in the database, you will be asked to provide a reference, published reference. Um, and also these ones, whatever you add here, if you go to add new and then you can go to save when you're done inserting, um, whatever you are gonna add here, is uh, uh, publicly visible by everybody and this is to avoid that uh, somebody puts uh, in the database a reference that was already there. We have lots of references in here. Um, a job that we did was taking all the references from uh, uh, the work of Kevin Pedoja et al who did a, a large uh, global database on uh, uh, last interglacial and other Pleistocene and also Pliocene sea level changes. Uh, we have all the references from uh, Fiona Hibbert's uh, Quaternary Science Review paper that was published back in 2016 that contains a lot of view series data. Um, and of course we have lots of references that were inserted by our authors uh, uh, while compiling the database. So, so far we have a lot of references in here. As I said before, uh, everything you insert here will be yours and yours only until you decide to publish it. So um, we will reach out to you if you publish something and please acknowledge the database. Um, then we will reach out to you and we will ask you, can we make this public and available to everybody? Another thing that we have been working on, thanks to a data stewardship scholarship by Pages, is to include not only Pleistocene sea level data, but also Holocene sea level data. And we did this uh, thanks to the collaboration with uh, Nicole Kahn. Uh, Nicole Kahn is the leader of an initiative which is called HOLSI. You can find everything about it at the link www.holsi.org. Uh, and basically we took the uh, data template that uh, Nicole, together with many other colleagues, put together for the Holocene. And you see that here, you be, it, and we, rep, we basically replicated it inside our um, database. So you have everything here and you can go record by record and insert your data. The second thing uh, uh, I wanted to show you is uh, what happens when you go into this upper part, which is the, the Wallis open data part. So first of all, here you have a map that shows version 1.0 of the sea level database. You can turn on and off samples, you can turn on and off sea level index points, uh, so you can basically explore the database and you will be able to actually see some general information on what each data point is about. This second button down here uh, shows the publicly available data. And now here I have to show you a few different things. We were discussing before the references and we have a references database where you can actually search our database of references, maybe if you want to make sure that some record has been included. 
So, so far, this is the number of references plotted by here that we have in our database. So we see, you see that we cover a, a large, large number of uh, published, of, of years when papers were published uh, on Pleistocene sea level index points. We have also a Zenodo repository. The Zenodo repository is the result of a special issue in the journal Earth System Science Data. Uh, basically, every author who contributed to a, a paper to this special issue was also requested to put their data in the standardized format that can be exported from Wallis. Uh, exactly, exactly here. So you basically have here the data for each single paper that has been uh, uh, included into Wallis. And if you want to have a look at the special issue, you find it here. This is the special issue of ESSD and you can download the papers one by one. Uh, in the papers, there is often explained uh, um, uh, why certain data points were inserted in a certain way, the choices that were made by the authors to um, compile the database and also some description about the different index points and their, um, and their interpretation in terms to past sea level changes. Right now, what we have uh, is uh, a um, editorial that takes all these collaborations and all these papers and puts them together in a single version 1.0 database. Um, and this basically makes uh, the state of the art of um, of what we are of what we are doing with uh, uh, with Wallis. Another thing I'm going to show you is uh, uh, that here we have the GitHub repository. You have already seen this page, but if you go here on the left, you can actually access. And uh, here you can basically access everything that is uh, uh, that there is in Wallis. Uh, so everything I'm going to show you today can be accessed from GitHub and you can also uh, download the code or fork it and modify it and uh, uh, maybe suggest to merge the uh, to merge the uh, repository once you're happy with your modifications. Last but not least, we also have a map interface. Uh, which is a visualization interface. It takes a little bit to, to, to upload. I just want to show it to you right now, but then I will talk a little bit about it, a little bit more in detail about it in a second. So this is what we have inside the sea level database part, which is basically uh, the part where you can actually um, access the publicly available data. And down here, there is also the function, a set of functions that will allow you to export the data inserted by and here there will be your username in this case Alessio Rover that's me so for example if I go here Pleistocene RSL data points I will have a table showing every data point that I inserted throughout uh, the different uh, papers I was responsible for uh, and if you go on these three dots you can actually see that you can export um, the single record each single record as a PDF this might be useful if you want to make a catalog of all the, um, all the sea level index points that you inserted, or if you want to put a, a supplementary material to some papers. It's very cool that uh, the, the interface gives also the opportunity to um, select which columns you want. Of course, we, I showed you that there are many columns. So if, for example, if you want the latitude and the longitude of your particular sea level index points, but you do not want the nation for example you just add these you you drag these apply and there we go you have latitude and longitude and you can export everything in excel or print it so you'll be able to export it to other um, to other programs the cool thing about this is that this is valid for every Pleistocene sea level, Holocene sea level data points, every sea level data point, every dated sample, and also you can export all the metadata that you uh, that you that you want. Um, by clicking this button here, what happens is that uh, uh, you activate a script that goes inside each one of these tables and basically makes uh, a multi-sheet Excel file and sends that to your uh, email address. So you recorded your email address when you logged in here. Uh, what happens is that we make an Excel file, we send it to your, uh, to your email address. And the Excel file is going to look exactly like one of the Excel files that was published uh, by our 
authors in the special issue. So if I take this paper, for example, I go down here, there is, a, there is an Excel file down here. I download it. I'm gonna open this with, oh. I'm gonna open this with, okay, with, uh, um, with uh, Excel. And you see that there is a readme here. Then there is a summary of all the C-level data points that these particular authors have been working on. C-level proxies, C-level indicators, elevation measurements, uh, techniques, geographic position and techniques, C-level datum, U-series samples, U-series on Spelletham samples with all the properties. Here it's the classic file that you would get. Uh, and you see that here you have more and more samples, amino acid racemization, only one electron spin resonance, luminescence, chronostratigraphy, and other kind of uh, uh, dating, and of course, all the references, uh, all the references that were used in this paper, they are all down here. So this is going to come to your inbox as soon as you press the button. It takes a few minutes to calculate everything, but this is going to come to your inbox, inbox as soon as you press the button. Okay, let me go back because this, is ba this basically closes a little bit the parts of the interface which are uh, dedicated to inserting data and to retrieving data, so to getting your data out. I'm going to show you a little bit later the visualization um, options that we have for Wallis. But before we get to there, I want to uh, I want to go to this helps and credits tab. Uh, many people think this is not, uh, sometimes in many interfaces, many people think, oh, this is not so useful. There's going to be some things that maybe I don't need there. Instead, in Wallis, we made a lot of effort to clarify what uh, needs to be inserted in the database. And if, in fact, if you press in the full help tips here, another page will open and this page will bring you to a documentation that we wrote for, for Wallis. This is a read the docs web page and you can, for example, going into Pleistocene RSL, you will be given instructions on how to compile the different fields. Do you remember that little question mark that there is uh, close to the fields? This is like a, an expansion of that question mark for every field. So you can also search the docs here. And for example, I can search for the term quality and I will find out that uh, there is a guideline on how to make the quality estimates for the sea level informations. Um, you can also, if you go down here in this, this, and you press on this green arrow here, uh, you can also download the entire um, data, uh, the entire uh, README or the entire help function as an Excel, uh, sorry, as a PDF file. So you have it, you have it all here in, in the form of a PDF file, if you prefer this kind of, this kind of format. So this was the first one. Then comes two uh, buttons that are actually very useful. The first one is to modify and delete uh, data. Let me tell you how the modification and delete you, deleting of data inside Wallis works. So whenever your data is only yours, you can modify that and you can delete that. So you can choose to modify or delete those data sets because it's only yours. Nobody else can see that. But once it's published, that data is fixed. So it's basically uh, fixed in, uh, uh, inside the database. And if you decide to modify or delete, you must have a good reason for it. So this is where you can input for your own data or for data from, from other colleagues modification or deletion maybe because you think there is a mistake maybe because you think the record should be corrected so we give you the opportunity to select everything here uh, from every dated sample or every place to cnc level data point up here and you can actually uh, you can actually request for a modification of that particular data point or for its deletion so what we do once we go on is we ask you a reason for proposing the change or the deletion. Uh, and in the, in the case the data set uh, or the data point is yours, uh, usually uh, it's enough to actually, that you actually give us a good reason. If the data point you are requesting to modify or delete has been inserted by somebody else, what we can do is put you in touch with the person who inserted the, that data point so you can actually uh, connect and discuss about it. And down here, there will be a reply of the administrator with 
the final decision on what to do with that data point. With this interface, everything, uh, every change of the database is recorded inside a track changes table. And this allows us to see the evolution from version one to the next versions that will come out uh, hopefully in the future. So this is very important as well, but as important as that, there is the bug report. Uh, the interface is always evolving. Uh, I coded it myself uh, and uh, there might be errors, there might be mistakes, there might be something that does not allow you to work properly. So we ask you to report the bugs in here so we can be uh, as quick as we can to, um, to fix them. So if you add a new bug report, it will, uh, um, it will say which version you're using, the user, and then here we ask you to report the details and also to tell us if it's high priority, medium or low priority, depending on uh, the, the severity of the problem. We also have uh, a channel on uh, YouTube where this video is going to be put. And in this channel, we share tutorials uh, on how to insert um, different kinds of data. Um, we insert new functionality as, as they become available inside, uh, inside Wallis. So uh, this is uh, the, the YouTube channel is actually uh, very, very interesting. Also, if you want to start inserting data and you want to know a little bit more about what's, what's behind, what's behind the, uh, the screens. Um, this is it for the interface. I promised you I would tell you a little bit more about the interface. So the most simple interface to the database showing the most current global version of the database, which right now is 1.0, is this one. Uh, and I already told you about this, but we have another visualization that uh, uh, we can use. I'm going to show you how to get there from our GitHub page. So. If you go to our GitHub page and you navigate down, you have here visualize and query Wallis data. Before I go on, I want to say that this was uh, the work of a student, Sebastian Garzon, uh, previously at the University of Munster. Now he moved on for his PhD in the Netherlands. And uh, uh, he was funded by the Data Stewardship Scholarship by Pages to actually provide a workable interface to the Wallis data. So he did this uh, visualization interface, which for those uh, who know a little bit about uh, different programs is made in R, shiny apps. Uh, and here you have again the same map. This is more or less the same map. Um, and here, but it's coupled with a couple more things. So here you have a plot that shows you the relative sea level and the age of what is displayed in the map. To simplify a little bit, let's just zoom in a play, into a place that I know fairly well. This is the island of Mallorca. And you see that this is uh, updating. Now you can see that here, for example, in this play, in, in this particular location, there are some new series data that plot older than the, the bulk of ages, which is last interglacial. So for example, I can decide to filter them out and I can decide to go here. So you see that now I have a different map. A different plot up here and I can and I can actually um, have a, a, a subset of my data. The, all of this is made onto a simplified version of the Wallis database which is basically just all the data in one table but it's very much simplified. I'm going to show you how we do this table in a second. What we can do starting from here is to go to the second tab here and have a summary table. So we can, uh, here is what uh, uh, the, the name of each record that is, that is down there. And I can download this table from here. So I can download the current selection. Let's see if it downloads as a CSV file. And I can open it with Microsoft Excel. And this is of course, you would have to import it, but here you have all the Wallis relevant data. Again, it's not all the data that is in the database for each data point, because that would have been too much to insert in a visualization data set. But if you're a user who is mostly interested in uh, a, a point in time, so elevation and age, this should be okay uh, to get you to get you started with your data analysis, whatever the data analysis is. One further step that we decided to insert 
is some sort of uh, statistical analysis on the Wallis uh, data or on the subset of the Wallis data. Um, basically, you see that here you have all the data points that we selected or that we left selected. And uh, um, in this interface, you are, you are given the possibility to merge them into a single data set following a probabilistic approach. What do I mean by that? We have a quite simple script that goes uh, uh, into each one of the C-level index points and takes within the Gaussian distribution one data point for age and one data point for C-level. And you repeats that several times to give you a probabilistic distribution of C-level in this case. Now, you see that here we have still these points and maybe we are interested to see what is the cloud, how is the cloud point looking like for these ones. So what I'm going to do is delete these two. I think it's 631 and 632. 631 and 632. There we go. So we have these, these zoomed, zoomed out. Uh, another thing that we can do is select which kind of strategy of sampling we want. This is explained uh, here in the info box. Basically, uh, there are some, uh, um, some data points that have a very large age span. So there are data points that have an age span that is basically the entire last interglacial, meaning the entire marine isotopic stage five, which includes different peaks. So I can select, uh, I can decide to select uh, these data points or to take these data points as indicative of a sea level that was continuous all along MIS-5e or only to sample these data points when the peak age or when the peaks uh, occurred according to the Lezieski and Raymo stack. So what I usually prefer is to do the peak sampling and down here I can select how many points per sea level index point I want. This is automatically calculated, uh, taking into account uh, how powerful the uh, background server is. Uh, just for this example, I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce it a, a little bit a little bit more. Uh, but you can also then I will I will also show you how you can also uh, delete uh, the download all of this in your computer and run this analysis with even more data points or even more um, repetitions that, than we have here. So I just select this, start merging, confirm. It just tells me that it's gonna take some time, but you see that uh, as we selected very few data points, it's gonna be very fast for the purpose of showing, I think this is this is okay, 600 data points. So what it is doing 600 times is uh, selecting a random value within the Gaussian distribution of age and sea level from the indicators that are shown here. And you see that here we have a, a cloud point. I can delete or take out the sea level indicators or we, we can also have a density plot. And I am going to remove the cloud point. So this is the density plot that basically is basically telling me where was the higher probability to have uh, a sea level uh, during these time periods in Mallorca according to the data that I have um, that I have uh, inside the database. You see that here there is a high probability for a sea level index point uh, of um, uh, 80,000 years age and this is driven mostly by a couple of few series ages that were published in Mallorca uh, for this time period. So this is actually giving us a little bit of confidence that uh, uh, what we see here it's it's repeating what is in the database as it should be one thing you, that appeared down here is a download menu this wasn't here before but it appeared after you uh, after uh, the, the calculation was finished so you can select to um, download the cloud point. This will download a CSV data point or a CSV file with the data points uh, name of the sampled C level index point, age and elevation. And uh, you can also uh, download a Docker container that will also include all the data, uh, sorry, all the choices that you made in terms of um, filtering and resampling and, and all the, all the option that you, options that you choose while you were going throughout the uh, work here. So this is the, the visualization interface that we built to work with, uh, with Wallis. And I think this is actually uh, quite, uh, quite uh, um, advanced and quite um, interesting to see. Uh, one thing more about this, uh, uh, this visualization interface 
is that it is available on GitHub. So it's available here uh, from my GitHub Wallis visualization. Uh, you can download it. And if you know how to run a shiny app in R, it's rather simple. You can actually um, you can actually run it on your laptop and then you will be able to customize it, to change it, or maybe even to uh, include more samples if you want. So you can go very crazy with the samples if you have a, a good computer uh, that is not, uh, uh, that is not uh, uh, let's say, um, limited by the server limitations that we have uh, from, the, from the online interface. So another thing I want to show you, and this is the last one, is that on GitHub, we also have here in this folder code, a number of um, scripts that can be used to analyze the database. Let me show you what I mean. These scripts are Python scripts. You can uh, uh, open the same folder that I had before on GitHub with uh, um, Jupyter notebooks. If you go inside code, there are some uh, some uh, notebooks already ready to use. So let me let me show you what they do one by one. The first one is the export to the Shiny app, and this is the script that basically make, makes that simplified table I was telling you about. And here it explains how we get from a complex database to a simplified table that is then served to the visualization. Uh, to the visualization interface. So this is all transparent. You can see what we did. If you don't agree with that, you can redo that, uh, redo your analysis and then, uh, um, uh, and then work out a modification to the R code. The second one is uh, the, um, are the scripts that we used to um, make the web map that you see in the application and that you see uh, also uh, in the in the visualization app, this web map. So you have the script here. Basically, you can uh, also uh, work this out or work work with this. Sorry, this is the one. Uh, basically, you can also work with these scripts to create your own web map if you are interested to make uh, uh, a web map, maybe with only with your own data. It's very simple if you know how to use uh, uh, Python. You just need to change the input database. So. Last but not least, uh, we also prepared scripts that uh, allow to query and explore a little bit uh, more in depth uh, the database. So mm, one thing I didn't say before, all the dependencies for these scripts are inside these folders, so are inside the Wallis code. So you can actually um, you can actually install a Conda, an Anaconda environment, and every, everything will be available in there to get you up and running with Wallis or the Wallis scripts. Um, just to uh, quickly show you what this query and explore data does, uh, it basically goes inside the database, the, uh, downloads a copy of it, then uh, you have two options, the options to select or to query the database by author. You're gonna have a list here of all the authors that are um, uh, that are included into uh, into Wallis or that, that put data into Wallis, and uh, down here you extract the data for that author or the entire database if you want. The second query goes by geographic uh, coordinates. So here you can put a bounding box with geographic coordinates, and then you can download data only for those uh, uh, delimited only by those coordinates. Uh, it's in the works to provide more options than these ones. Uh, if you work on this, uh, if, you are, if you are a Python expert and if you work on this, we would be very happy to include your work into these, uh, into these options. So please let us know if you come up with different, um, with different ways to uh, work out. Uh, in this passage, which is present in all the scripts, uh, uh, this is very important. Uh, uh, you make the, there are two scripts making basically substitutions uh, and making the links between the tables. So uh, this is done because uh, uh, Wallis is a little bit of a um, not conventional da SQL database. It's just an ensemble of tables and the links between the tables uh, are defined uh, not inside the database, but in PHP. The reason for that is explained inside the editorial, but uh, it's gonna get too long before um, to, to get into that right now. But the bottom line is that you need, uh, when, you, when you download everything to Python, you need 
uh, these two scripts to make a summary of the data, which is usually the same, which is still the same one that we then use for um, the uh, interface. And then you need to make those connections that PHP was making inside the interface. So this is what these two scripts do. So if you if you are curious, you can go inside there. It's also explained in the read the docs in the read the docs, so you can actually see what uh, uh, what is done to the data to actually uh, make the connection between the different tables. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it's actually rather simple. Once this is done, the only thing that uh, uh, these this, uh, scripts do is uh, write the spreadsheets. So write the data file that I showed you before, and then we also write everything in GeoJSON. This one also saves the data in CSV format. So whenever you navigate to uh, Wallis, inside here in the atlas versions let's take version one you have the output in csv json and xls so these are the three uh, the three outputs that we have json uh, for those who don't know about it uh, it's very useful if you want to plot the data in mapping applications so uh, another thing that this uh, script does this is a rather long set of scripts uh, basically uh, does some descriptive statistics on the data. I, these were mostly dictated by uh, the fact that I needed something when I was uh, either writing the papers for the special issue or writing the editorial. I found myself needing something and then I included the code inside this one. So you will see there's lots of different descriptive statistics that can, can be actually um, done from the Wallis database. Maps as well, this is the main figure of the editorial, for example, and age constraints, etc. All of this can be then, in the end, saved into a big zip file that basically contains everything you just worked on. So I think this one could be really the, um, the starting point for those who are a little bit more, um, know a little bit more about databases and know how to use Python, to uh, get the data out of the database and start modifying themselves. Um, what I would suggest is to keep everything um, at least within the substitu substitutions and make summary. This makes sure that you have everything defined inside the database as it should be. And then after that, you can start going crazy with uh, um, everything you want to do with the database. So uh, I think this is uh, pretty much it about Wallis. I just want to say a couple more words um, about uh, acknowledgements. So we would be very grateful uh, as this was a project that was developing within uh, the ERC starting grant work warm course. If you would, uh, when you use the database, if you would please acknowledge our team. So we are a team of people working on this. I am just uh, uh, the leader of uh, an exceptional group of, group of scientists who put their time and uh, uh, I would say also quite a lot of money to make this happen. But please do not forget always to cite the original authors. And by original authors, I mean those who went out in the field or those who were in the lab collecting the data that we summarize inside the database. So please always remember to give credit where credit is due, especially to the original authors who uh, should not be forgotten when we do databases. And of course, also making a database with published data is not easy. We have lots of people who worked in uh, inserting data in uh, Wallis. They published papers which are available in the special issue that I can pull up again here in Earth System Science Data. So please also cite these papers uh, alongside with the original authors because a lot of work went into uh, creating these papers. I can show you some examples. Um, for example, this one. This is a paper that was co-authored by myself, written by a PhD student, and she really went through many, many, many uh, papers and they are listed here um, to actually provide standardized sea level index points uh, uh, from a very, very large region. So I think it's important to uh, give credit where credit is due and also 
um, remember remember about the people who worked on this so if you use this uh, <coughs> please let us know let us know if you have uh, um, questions if you have uh, ideas on how to improve it one of the latest improvements that i did uh, was for example on the suggestion of some colleague who did not want to be uh, logged in to suggest modifications was this interface where you can just suggest data changes uh, just by entering an, an email and this was born from a suggestion that that came from the community exactly the same screen i showed you before but um, not being logged into the database so not forcing you to be subscribed to the database if you don't want to do that thank you very much i think uh, this is all about wallis uh, and please do let us know what what you think about it we look forward to work with you and we really look forward to see how this is going to be used in the future